I've talked about protein a lot on here because it's such an important nutrient that many people aren't getting enough of and there's a lot of misconceptions about. I'm Melissa, I'm a dietitian, and we're gonna talk about plant-based or vegan protein powders today what to look for, what makes a good one, and what to avoid. If you've watched any of my previous videos on protein, which I'll link below, you will have heard me talk about the amino acid leucine. Leucine is kind of the light switch that turns on muscle protein synthesis. This is the process that allows the muscle to repair and build. Now, even if you're not a bodybuilder, this process is really important for health. One of the biggest predictors of quality of life as we age and health span is that muscle mass. Once that light switch is on, you do need other amino acids around to come in and actually build and repair muscle. However, leucine is critical to initiate that process. Plant sources of protein are notoriously low in leucine. Our best leucine sources are animal products and especially whey, although there are some plants that contain an okay amount of leucine. Half a cup of firm tofu has 1.8 grams of leucine, one cup of cooked oat bran has half a gram of leucine, and peas are often thought of to be high in leucine, but fresh peas only have 0.14 grams of leucine in a one cup portion. Per meal, you want to aim for about two and a half to three and a half grams of leucine. And the older you get, the more that number increases because you get less efficient at that muscle protein synthesis process as we age. As a comparison, a four ounce portion of meat will get you two to four grams of leucine and a 20 gram serving of whey powder will get you two to three grams of leucine. So one of the most important things when looking for a plant-based or vegan protein powder is the leucine content. And because no one specific plant food is high in leucine, you'll need to find a product that has a blend of different types of protein sources to help reach that goal of two and a half to three and a half grams of leucine per serving. And that's important if the protein powder is the only source of protein that you're getting in that meal, because you won't have any other foods that are contributing any significant amount of leucine. So here's an example. This you can see here has pea protein as its main ingredient, but it also has pumpkin seed protein, sunflower seed protein, and alfalfa protein. Because it's using a blend of different types of proteins, it's much more likely that that actually has a good leucine content. Here's another example. This one has pea, navy bean, lentil, garbanzo, and cranberry protein as its blend. Now what you don't want to see is individual amino acids being added to that protein because whole protein actually has more of an, a positive effect on the body than just individual amino acid. So here's an example where we see that. They have leucine and lysine added individually. So that's actually a product that you would want to avoid. A really good rule of thumb when trying to pick a plant-based or vegan protein powder is getting a product that has an amino acid profile on the label. And here's two examples of what that could look like. This is gonna look different product to product, but it will list how much leucine is in the product. And like I mentioned, two and a half to three and a half grams of leucine per meal is our goal. So if you end up using this product that has 2.4 grams of leucine per serving of two scoops, then you'll be right on the money. Especially if you're mixing that with a couple of other ingredients, like in a smoothie, you'll be able to get that 0.1 to get up to at least two and a half pretty easily. So protein and specifically the leucine content is probably the most important thing to consider when you're looking for a plant-based or vegan protein powder because that's the nutrient that's most likely lacking. However, there are also some other considerations. For example, look at the sweetener that they are using. I tend to try to avoid artificial sweeteners and something like stevia is a good alternative. Are they using artificial colors? Do you care if the ingredients are organic? Things like that are also things to consider when you're trying to find a good product. You also want to try to buy from brands that are GMP certified because this is going to lower the risk that that product is contaminated with things like heavy metals. And that's actually a big topic of concern when it comes to supplements. A lot of supplements are contaminated with heavy metals. You can also ask the company to see their heavy metal analysis results and the company should be willing to share that with you. And then if you're a drug tested athlete, all of the supplements that you take should be third-party tested for banned substances. So any product, including protein powder, should have one of these two logos on the product. 
NSF for Sport or Informed Choice. These are both third party testing companies that will help to make sure that that product does not have any banned substances in it. Vega and Garden of Life both have good plant-based protein powders that kind of meet all of the criteria that we talked about today. And specifically their sport blends are really good. What is your favorite plant-based protein powder? Comment below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel.